All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are back in the MIW Morels Ironworks for the Nest episode four. And uh, you know, before we get started, the first thing we need to do is thank all of you for your feedback. It has been overwhelming and really uh, special in a time like this. We are kind of doing this because we believe that we were put on this earth to help other people maximize their potential, and this is the best we can do at this point in time. But the feedback that we've gotten from not only friends and family and our student athletes and our students at West Everett High School, but the community, uh, people outside the community, the questions we've we've received that we're going to address today in a Q&A segment, and uh, just the positive feedback that we've gotten has been outstanding, and we can't thank you enough. Keep listening, keep spreading the word, as long as we're doing our job. If we're not doing our job, then we expect that, you know, the emails to come in and say, you guys got to step it up. But, uh, but keep it coming, because just as much as we try to keep you going, you're keeping us going. In this, in this very, very difficult time that's going to get more difficult as we move forward. But as we said today, uh, we're back here, Mr. Pancella, um, and we, we want to address some of the great questions that came in throughout last week as we unloaded the uh, IAO series. And I'll tell you what, we got a handful of questions, Joe, that are just out of this world from our students at West Everett High School that run the gamut. Um, not only athletics by any means, we have some general school questions. We have some great mental health questions as we move forward during this pandemic. And we have uh, some miscellaneous and we want to try to get to those today. Yeah. And really the, the response has been overwhelming. You know, we didn't know what this platform would allow us to do, but through the help of Mr. Kirshner and all of you, uh, it's spreading in a really positive way, and, and it's been empowering, empowering for us as well as as we continue to try to find our normal. Um, and like we talked about in some of the episodes in the past, the, the students are our normal. That interaction is a big deal for us, and um, we're just so happy that people can take this in and learn a little bit, and we are going to do our best to answer the hundreds of questions that have come in without speculating on some of these questions that we truly do not have the answers to. And um, we want to just be upfront about that. We, we're not going to guess anything. We're not going to speculate anything. We're going to go off what Mr. Capella, Dr. Gizmundi, you know, our, our government officials in the United States are, are telling us, and, and that's all we can do right now. This will be, you know, ever changing and adapting right now. And, um, but we hope we can give you some good insight and, and help ease your minds as we transition into a new week, our second week of distance learning. And there's no way that we could get to every single one of these questions. So um, our, our staff, consistent of uh, Erica Kirshner, kind of went through and, and shout out to her for kind of putting these into categories for us. And we're going to try to get to as many as we can in the time that we have. Um, so let's, let's get it. All right, you ready? Absolutely. All right. So we're going to start off in our general school category, and I'm going to reiterate what you just said, which is we don't have all the answers, and we're not going to speculate, and we're not going to overstep because we don't know. But uh, do you believe that we will still have the following events, whether they get rescheduled or canceled? Senior trip, prom, graduation? Again, one, one of the tougher questions that's been presented to us Dr. Gizmundi put out a great message on Friday to the whole West Effort community addressing some of these questions. And uh, to be brutally honest, we, we simply do not have those answers at this time. Um, if at all possible, knowing the type of man Dr. Gizmundi is and how much he cares about putting on for the students, he will do everything in his power to allow these events to happen, whether they're rescheduled for a different time, um, but he will continue to seek out the right information and release information as it comes in. But we're going to go off of what he said on Friday, you know, that he's continuing to get information and gather information. Um, and we'll release things as he releases things on those topics. And I do want to say this because, and I want to, I want to put it um, in a way that I don't want to offend our seniors at all because your senior year is the culmination of your schooling, right, K to 12. It's a huge year. There are a lot of big time things that happen that you've been looking forward to. But at the same time, you're getting ready to go out into the world and be an adult, right, and move past your 
schooling days, whether it be in a college, the workforce, military, wherever. And I, as much as you deserve, and you pointed this out to me before we got on the air, as much as our seniors deserve to have a great experience, you need to take a step back and look at, I mean, this is bigger than anything anyone alive has dealt with to date. So the things that are going on right now transcend anything that, 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 that was, was, you know, that you was, you were due for. I'm not saying that, as you said, we're working our butts off. Everybody's working and trying to make this happen, but there are people out there dying, right? There are people out there scared to death to leave their house because they're in the high risk group and we need to be aware of that. So as much as we're going to try to get information to everybody as much as we can and keep things on to create some normalcy and to keep those great memories that you have, this is an event that will change possibly history. It will definitely change history. It's already being written in the history books. And, and I think you said it correct. There, there's not many people alive right now who have experienced something of this magnitude. It's not just South Jersey or West Deptford High School. It's, it's the entire world, you know, hundreds of thousands of cases and deaths being reported. And, and unfortunately it's our older population who, who's struggling the most with this. And I know, including myself, there's days where I'm like, man, I'm fine. Everything's good. But it, it's, it's my age group and younger that are having the easiest time with this. But the more information I've learned on it is if we don't take this advice and we don't quarantine and we don't stay out of public gatherings, th then we're failing our elders. We're right. failing the people that, that helped get us to this point because they're the ones that are affected by this. You know, most people don't even know that they're a carrier or, they're, or they possess this and all of a sudden they come in contact with someone else and, and, and that's how this thing continues to spread. I, I think at this point we have to take what they're advising us to do and take it very seriously. Yeah. Do you think students, great question here. Do you think students or coupling, do you think students like distance learning more than going to school? And if distance learning shows improved work ethic in students, do you think it should be an available option even in normal circumstances? It, it's oh. a, it's a question I've heard from, from even my sister who's a teacher. Um, and obviously some college students who are going through this right now as well. I, I, I definitely think it, it will open some eyes, especially in education, that, that maybe this is a possibility. I don't know if, if it goes lower than the high school level, but I do think, I guarantee there's some tech companies out there right now who are looking at this as an opportunity to try to take education and, and actually refine some of it and, and see if maybe this is a possibility. But at the same time, I think it's important to identify that everyone learns differently and everyone's ability to learn is different. And so where this may be very suitable for some, it's very difficult for others. I know someone like myself who, who can be scatterbrained and, and has ADD and, and str I, I struggle with the home setting that the work setting is a more comfortable environment for me to get things done because I find myself getting sidetracked and I know there's students out there feeling the same way, but I do think this is going to allow schools to explore other options of learning so here i'm going to speak as a parent as administrator as a former teacher it, we had to make phone calls throughout the week to families to just make sure everybody had access to it and the great thing about this distance learning is that it's forcing parents including myself because you know i leave the house at 3 45 a.m i get back as late as i get back I don't do a good enough job checking in with my girls that are in third and second grade. I just make sure their work's done, but I don't ask them exactly what they're doing. And I think a lot of parents are like that, that are working jobs and working maybe two jobs or night shifts and whatnot. This type of learning forces the parent to be involved in what your student's learning, which I think is phenomenal. It's been great for me, I know, personally. I think some of the parents I've talked to, it's been great too. However, on the flip side... Teachers are in the craft of teaching. They went to school to teach. They love to teach. They love to educate. And this is, it's, it's, right now it's hard to say I'm really doing everything I can with my craft and getting better at it and enjoying, because you're at a distance. You want to be face to face. You want that interaction. You want to see hands raised. You want to, you know, be able to offer extra help and, and those kinds of things. And it's, that's hard to do right now. So I think, is this the wave of the future? No, but does it have its own sense of 
man, there's some really interesting silver linings to come out of this. Yes, I think a lot of those silver linings happen in the home when parents are forced now to follow up with their children and be present and, and those kinds of things, and that including myself in that. I think it can also, there's the possibility of building a deeper connection between student and parent and, and their understanding of each other. And right now students are learning how their parent, how their parents or guardians handle tough situations while they try to work from home and, and pay the bills and, and the magnitude of responsibilities that parents have right now, but also they're getting a feel for what their child accomplishes and what their, what their child deals with on a daily basis. And I think that that can be rewarding in a sense, although a difficult time trying to find the positives, which I know a lot of students have asked in these questions, you know, that's how I have to try to look at it right now, that, that there's a deeper connection that you, that you're getting both parent and student right now. And, and, you know, it's going to continue to be challenging, but I think the more open-minded you are to it, the more you can get out of it. What's your advice for student athletes who may have slipped into a state of being unmotivated and complacent? I I told you earlier today, and during this time or times of adversity, and certainly when I was competing, I am very specific as to what I'm putting into my brain that I can control. That means I ain't watching the news. I was never a big news guy. I'm certainly not a news guy now. I know what's going on out there. I don't need to be reminded of it. I don't need a breaking news story to tell me the same thing over and over again, which is just negativity. I know what I need to do. I've been told what I need to do. Let me follow that out. So I'm going to watch specific movies or videos or you talked about podcasts last time. I'm going to listen to specific music. I'm not going to listen to music that's going to put me in a bad mood. I'm going to listen to music that gets me jacked up and and makes me feel good about myself. Um, those are the things that I would recommend if you start feeling that you are slipping into that unmotivated state. I, I'll be honest, we just talked about before we came on the air tonight. Today, I said where I've been, where I sometimes struggle at night when I'm starting to fall asleep or try to go to sleep, and it's like oh, tomorrow we got they're doing the same. It's like Groundhog's Day, and we're kind of stuck in this. And it's so so. I think everybody's dealing with those kinds of things, and it's easy to become unmotivated. So make sure that you're filling your brain. We talked about those sixty to seventy thousand thoughts per day. Make sure you're filling your brain with positive things that are going to motivate you, whether they're visual or audio. Or audio. Um, but you can control that. You definitely can control that. And I think, you know, there's been some questions that go along with this one about, well, we don't have the bell schedule and we don't have that routine that kind of keeps us in check. I, I think now is where you almost have to create your own bell schedule. Yeah. I, I think, you know, Coming out of the weekend right now, being Sunday right now, you, you may want to take the rest of today and plan out Monday through Wednesday. You know, 6 a.m. wake up. You know, almost like a military regime in terms of this is how I need to operate. I know I had said to you earlier, I'm trying to ad- attack the day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. before I finally settle in and try to relax a little bit with my wife as she wraps up her day from the bedroom office as right. she's being forced to work from home as well. You're going to need something some type of list, some type of organization that's going to keep you on track right now. And it will be difficult. And motivate each other. If you're not motivating each other right now, what are we doing? You're not getting through this solo. You're already, uh, you know, in seclusion enough. The text messages that you and I share with each other, Mr. Kirshner, um, in preparation for these shows, talking to our coaches, uh, you know, those kinds of things, talking to friends, relatives, just check in. I know my daughters, I've never been a big tech guy. I, I hate social media. Um, and, and we've kind of sheltered our daughters from that, but they have the iPads now and they have the ability to link up with one of their friends on FaceTime and to see them, we give them an hour before bed at night to see like, that's some of the best part of their night. Their day is to link up with a friend. I know they're younger, so they don't have access. So it's new to them. But just linking up with each other and checking in with each other and giving each other positive thoughts, I think, is critical to your daily motivation. And, and again, we had talked about this before we came on the air, but, you know, I'm born just outside of the technology era. And a lot of our students right now were, were born in it. And, and now is the time to really take advantage of the technology that you do have the group messaging, the FaceTime calls, that social interaction, that social 
distancing that we're being forced into, that's the way you can combat that right mm -hmm. now. Yep. There's, there's nothing wrong with creating a, a group chat of, of 30 kids saying, hey guys, I just went out for a 10 mile run, just did some push-ups and sit-ups, just challenging the group today. Let me know what you guys accomplished. Seriously, yeah, absolutely. I, you and I are in a, a, a group text with, with coworkers and it's, it's an exercise-based group chat. That was before this started, but Boy, has it picked up recently yeah. from our whole group who, who's doing more because it's important that the exercise, as much as you may not want to do it, may be the only mental, physical and emotional conditioning you get right now. You know, and even if that means you're trapped in the house doing it, we're going to get to that, like what you can do in the house. But you, you've got to challenge yourself and challenge others. Right and I'll, now. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to get on a soapbox right here because I know a lot of our kids out there that know me. Like, here we go. Morel on the social media soapbox again, like what the throw to smash the phone with a bat, whatever. But the, the, a silver lining of what we're dealing with right now, how many times have we seen in education that social media can destroy people, right? It becomes the focus of teenagers in our building sometimes and how quickly negative things can spread, whether it be a video, a picture, words, screenshots, whatever it be. Like, like Social media can do a lot of damage negatively on someone, and we never, when we were in school, I never felt like anybody respected the positive things that can come out of social media. That's why I just dis detest it so much because of the negative damage you can do. But now you can, you're by yourself, right? You don't have that. You're not together. So you can't, there's and the, the positive impact that a, a positive text to one of your friends or so, anyone can send could be so, we could see the positive piece of, technology right now the social media you just referenced our group chat when 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 uh when another when one of our friends sends a text that they just ran you know you ran 10 miles and you see the what are they gifs mm -hmm. gifs I'm emojis still, i'm still new to it but yeah gifs emojis <laughs> twittergram whatever it's called i don't even know what it's called but when they start sending i don't even know how to send one of those pictures but when you send one of those pictures and it's like just hilarious or awesome or really motivating like somebody keeps sending the rocky run i get jacked man that makes me feel good somebody sends us a text hey that that uh that podcast was and then the little fire pictures what are those pictures called emojis emojis so the little fire guys i'm yeah. like yeah i like the fire awesome yeah we're bringing so i think that our particularly our students need to take time to realize the positive impact that that social media and that technology can have on a person. Just that one text could make somebody's day in the hardest time of their life. And I think a lot of people are using it as a positive platform right now, which, you know, fortunately and unfortunately, it takes events like this for that to happen. But I think that's why social media was created initially to be more of a positive yeah. reinforcement, not as a way of, <laughs> took a turn. of, of bashing others and yeah. putting others down. Um, but the more I'm on there, you, you're seeing people who are putting out, you know, free exercise videos or free yoga videos or ways to sign up online to different things. Remember it, it's not just this area. This is everyone mm -hmm. in the world trying to make these adjustments. And I think it's been really exciting watching big names take advantage of this and put out some things that you can utilize right now to, to keep your mind occupied and, and stay in some type of routine. Yeah, you need to overwhelm the brain with positive juice. How could someone who has been working hard to keep a team together in this time of crisis help build team morale? It's a tough, that's a tough question. But again, I think this is where, you know, as a leader of your team, you, you take that time, whether it's individual text or through a group text. I got this for you. Phone call, novel idea, old school, throwing it back to 93, no text messaging, get on your cell phone and call somebody. It might be an uncomfortable conversation. I know that, you know, I was supposed to have um, our end of season evaluation meetings with our junior class of football players this, this week in my office. Couldn't do it, obviously. So I called these guys and sometimes to hear the voice, even though it might be a brief conversation, calling someone and talking to them is also a really good 
you know, way to communicate with people. And I think if you're a leader of a team as a, as a student athlete, get your roster out and start calling people and, and talk to them on the phone or FaceTime. What is it? Facetagram? Face to tweet? You are ridiculous. FaceTime. Face, but FaceTime. I, but you, FaceTime. Can, you can group Skype and you can group FaceTime, you know, Google Hangout, Google Chat. There's a million mm-hmm. platforms right now for you to be able to still have, even though it's not physical, but you're having that face-to-face conversation and it could be a group of you. Maybe there's the spring team captains or maybe it's just your spring seniors who yeah. it's still an unknown, but why not reach out to the underclassmen, see how they're doing, check in and come up with, Hey guys, here's, here's a week, a week's worth of activities. I know girls lacrosse has been putting some videos out there of some of the, uh, some of the girls doing some activities and stick work and running yeah. two miles and stuff like that. And it's a positive way to let your teammates know you're thinking about them and also showing your coaches I know this is bigger than me, but we still care, and we're still working hard. When, I, at our when I was a freshman in high school, if a senior would have called me and said, "Yo, Jay, just checking in on your brother, seeing how you're doing," Whew. that's gonna drive me for probably the next three, four days. Like, whoa, this guy's thinking about me. Absolutely. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying this for me, or I did something so great, but I made it a point yesterday on my run, you know, which was an an hour, hour and a half run, uh, no headphones, that every single person. I came across, I said, hello, how are you? Even slowed down to have some conversation. And I can't tell you how much it meant to, especially the older population that was out walking around the Newton Lake and this and that, the smile on their face. People rely on social interaction. And again, at a safe distance, but there's a woman sitting on the park bench and, and the smile that it put on her face it brought the same smile to my face. It's, it's the little things right now that, that go a long way. And, and that made me realize that in that hour and a half yesterday, uh, I ran with Mr. McAndrew the day before we saw an older gentleman carrying a fence, dropped it. We stopped our run, met him on the driveway. We carried the fence to the backyard just on a whim and how appreciative he was just to be recognized in, in a time like this was a big deal. So yeah. you may think it's not important, but it, it could make someone's day, week, or, or even save their life right now. Do you think this precaution of being out of school and possibly shutting down spring sports is overkill? It's a tough question. It's a very tough question. I think initially, for me even, I was like, there's no way. There's no way. But as I've continued to be educated and take what's being put out there, I have to believe and trust that these are the right decisions to slow things down and try to get us back on track. And I'd like to get your thoughts on it as well. I was on your train. And we're competitors. When you're, when you're a competitor, you're like, nothing is getting in the way of me competing. So if you're on the tracks, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And that's how I first looked at it. And that's an immature, you know, look at it. And it's a competitive look at it. The reality is, First of all, no one said, well, I know we shut it down for now. If we can, if we can get back to school, the NJSIAA is going to do everything possible to create some kind of truncated season. There's no doubt in my mind. You know, if we're in school, they're going to try to, they're going to try to make competition happen. That's the bottom line. Um, but as I said at, on the outset of this show, one set of this show, this is much bigger than a spring season. And I'm not saying that to belittle our spring teams or coaches in any way, shape, or form, but the mature outlook on this is that this is a global issue that is killing people, and we are trying to put a stop to it. So is this overkill in the big picture? Absolutely not. Absolutely right. not. And I was not on that, but I was I was outside of that at the beginning of this whole entire thing. But that's the reality. So was I, and I've been forced to adapt in terms of my understanding and belief in it. And and really, anyone who's who thinks we're excited about it or or think it should happen, we're not. This is mine and your livelihood. Yep. Sp- sports are my entire purpose in terms of my job and and the way that I feel like I'm serving is you know serving a community is by giving back to the student athlete. But now I feel like we're trying to take this and we're trying to reach all students that this isn't just the student athlete anymore. And we apologize if, if we geared it toward that, but you know, being that we work in athletics, we wanted to try to focus on that, but we're now understanding that we're trying to reach all of you, the high school students, maybe your parents and anyone that you share this with that, that we do understand. And, and 
as overkill as it may sound right now, this is the best approach to try to get us back. If the shutdown didn't happen, we're not back for a long time. Yeah. This gives us a chance. Yes. This gives us hope gives us a chance. to yep. get back on to get back out there in the classroom and competing as soon as possible. Final question for this for this show. Uh, we addressed general school. We addressed athletics. We'll finish with this last question. Next, next Q and A show is going to be a good one. We got mental health and miscellaneous and mental health. You know, at this time, oh boy, that's a big one. So we're going to finish with this. What do you guys miss most about not being able to interact with the students at West Everett High School? But I could get. <laughs> The students know I'm an emotional person. I could get emotional thinking about it, but um, even on my worst days, um, the students bring me back for more. The, the students put, they bring me life. Like they're the light and I see it and all of a sudden I snap out of anything that I feel sorry for myself about. Um, and, and that's something I'm missing right now. I'm, I'm finding any way possible to reach out to students because that interaction is what I've built the last seven years on. Every single day I wake up, no matter how I feel, when I step into the building and I see the first student, I'm given life I didn't know I had. And, and I hope you guys know that, that this affects me just as hard. And, and I can't wait to get back at it with you. I've always loved this job, but I couldn't feel stronger about it than I do right now. And that's because of the opportunities that the students present me. I want to echo that because you and I have been, you know, inseparable for the last seven years and you throw yourself more into the students than anyone I've ever met. And I know how much you do out of your office and the just endless number of students that there are students that aren't even athletes that come down to your office just for a safe place, just to have a conversation with somebody they know they care, just to remove themselves from the daily grind. And I know that that sometimes is more um, fulfilling maybe for you than it even is for that student. So this has got to be some of the toughest times of your life. Uh, I, I just miss, I miss the genuine um, enthusiasm and ability to help make people the best they can be and spread that message face to face and in a group setting and just the, the, the camaraderie of being in the group setting is unbelievable. And I love the challenge, the daily challenge of walking into a building with 1200 other people and not really knowing exactly what's going to come up and having to deal with that. You know, that's exciting. That's, that's, man, that gives you some juice going into the day where there's just that, you don't know what's going to happen and who you're going to bump into and who you're going to meet today. And, you know, is there going to be this? Is there going to be that? And, and, and then the overlying piece of being able to make people better, you miss that. You miss that. So we, we hope that this is doing that in some sort of way. Uh, there are a bunch of questions that we still have to get to. And that we're going to release, uh, you know, we're going to get into a, another question and answer series here. We also have our ability series coming next week. We're going to keep pumping these out. We're going to keep pumping these out um, because it seems like people want them. And we, it's certainly helping us. And so we have a you know, laundry list of things that we want to get to. An ability, an ability series, accountability, reliability, dependability, vulnerability. Uh, we have all these. I think the mental health piece is going to be critical critical as we continue to move through this uh we have our ship series right on leadership and we also want to have some fun you know we're gonna throw some fun in the mix down the road uh favorite movies favorite tv shows you know we had a couple questions on what, what's your best tv show to watch while you're doing a right or COVID the COVID-19 crisis the, the greatest west effort athlete that coaches and or in the and building we want to we want to get into national those. champion pitcher sits right over there that's right we want to get into those conversations as well and we know how much you guys love hearing us talk about our coworkers and, and people we feel strongly about, but, but just know we're, we're here with you. And I think uh, Mr. Morell said it right. 
I also miss the challenge of showing up in the building because I know each day presents a new challenge and each student feels some type of way. And, and we want you to know we're still thinking about you and we, we still are here for you. We care about you. Um, and none of that will ever go away. And if anything, it's only going to get stronger the next time you see us as, as if you thought we were already overwhelming. Uh, we'll be coming bigger, better than ever when yeah. we see you guys again. So just be ready for that. And that's why we expect you to keep working. That's right. We're going to keep getting better. You keep getting better. Thank you for listening to this, and uh, we will be back with you um, sometime this week. Sometime this week. All right, everybody, take care.